This is episode number 164. If you want to get political, talk about Donald Trump, and also give you a counterintuitive way of how to grow your business, that's coming up. This is the Red Podcast. How to take your idea and make a name for yourself within your industry and beyond. Spread your message. Attract a following. Rise above the noise. Here's your host, David Hooper. As you know, Donald Trump is running for president, trying to secure the Republican nomination. At first, I didn't think that he was serious. I thought it was just a publicity stunt. He's talked about doing this before, but then he kind of flounders out, just goes away, goes and works on reality TV, bottled water, dating Russian supermodels, whatever it is that Donald Trump does with his time. But it looks like he's serious this time, and the way he's approaching it is quite interesting. I'm going to talk about it on this episode. This is the Red Podcast, the podcast for influencers. If you're a blogger, a podcaster, speaker, marketer, a nonfiction author or entrepreneur, this is the podcast for you. The focus, it's how to take your idea, make a name for yourself and make money. That's exactly what Donald Trump is doing right now. Except when he pisses somebody off, he's actually losing money. Did you know Donald Trump had a mattress? That's mind blowing to me, but Let's take it back to the dating Russian supermodels. You know, you need a mattress when you're doing that kind of thing. He had his own fragrance available at Macy's. I don't know if it's available anywhere else, but Macy's stopped doing business with him. He's got an interesting business plan, kind of like Kiss. He likes to put his name on everything. It's not really about what he does, but his name on branded merchandise. Going to talk about that a little bit later in this episode. I'm going to start with something a little bit different, a little more lighthearted. Perhaps I want to talk about some advertising done in the 1960s. It was done for Volkswagen. And I want you to think about the 1960s for a second. If you took a photograph of any American street in the 1960s and you paid attention to the cars that were on that street, one of the things that you would notice that you wouldn't see today is how many of them were made in America. At the time, mid-1960s, about 50% of all cars being sold were done by one American company, GM, which of course was several American companies, Buick, Chevrolet, Cadillac. That's actually kind of an interesting discussion in itself. It starts you with Chevrolet, work you up to Buick, then you go to Oldsmobile, eventually to Cadillac. They'd work you up the ladder, getting you to spend more and more money as you would make more and more money. But regardless of which brand of General Motors car that you were into, they were big, they had powerful engines, they were fast. So if you were doing something different from big, powerful, fast, what would you do? There's a famous ad campaign from Volkswagen. Now a recognized automobile in the United States, but at the time, not really. It was completely different from what was going on with General Motors, with Ford, with Chrysler, with the big American companies. This is a print ad, and the headline says, they said it couldn't be done. It couldn't. And then the copy goes on to say, we tried. Lord knows we tried, but no amount of pivoting or faking could squeeze the Philadelphia 76ers' Wilt Chamberlain into the front seat of a Volkswagen. So if you're seven foot one like Wilt, our car is not for you. Or maybe you're a mere six seven. In that case, you'd be small enough to appreciate what a big thing we've made out of the Volkswagen. There's more headroom than you'd expect, over 37 and a half inches from seat to roof. And there's more legroom in the front than you'd get in a limousine because the engine's tucked over the rear wheels where it's out of the way and where it can give the most traction. It goes on to talk about how different this car is. And that's the point of this episode. Whether we're talking about Donald Trump or the Volkswagen or what you sell, nothing is for everybody. There's a saying in marketing, they zig, you zag. In other words, do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. And that's the way to get attention. You don't play their game. You play your own game. And if you don't like the game that's being played, go to a different table. If you've ever been to Las Vegas, you're playing poker, don't like how you're doing, change tables, start playing with different people. And that's exactly the same thing you should be doing in your marketing. If you don't like the game that's being played, you change the table. And for your business, that means you change the discussion. For Volkswagen, what that meant is, yeah, it is small. Yeah, 
It is slow. Here's another ad that I've got. The headline says, Presenting America's Slowest Fastback. The copy takes maybe 8% of the ad. There's a picture of the bug with a white background. There are some cars around with very streamlined roofs, but they're not Volkswagens. They're called Fastbacks, and some of them are named after fish. You can tell them from Volkswagens because VW won't go over 72 miles an hour, even though the speedometer shows a very optimistic top speed of 90. So you can easily break almost any speed law in the country in a VW. And you can also cruise right past gas stations, repair shops, and tire stores. The VW engine may not be the fastest, but it's among the most advanced. It's made of magnesium alloy, one step better than aluminum. And it's so well machined, you may never add oil between changes. The VW engine is cooled by air, so it can never freeze up or boil over. It won't have anything to do with water. So there's no reason to name it after a fish. Brilliant copy. It takes everything that people didn't like about a VW, and it made it cool. Not for everybody, but for some people. But it's not just doing the opposite of everybody. They zig, you zag. There's more to it than that. It's also stating your position in a way that's not ambiguous. If you've ever bought a house, and even if you haven't, you can go on Netflix, look up HGTV, the TV shows they have. Look at House Hunters. Watch them follow a realtor around as she's showing houses. I've always found it interesting how realtors make the best out of everything. One time I saw House Hunters or another similar show. Realtor was showing the house, and there's an interstate next to the house. It was behind some trees. You couldn't see it, but you could hear it. And the realtor said, well, just pretend it's a stream. And it did sort of sound like a stream, but that didn't fool anybody. Everybody who heard it knew that it was an interstate. And we see this all the time in marketing, and sometimes we do it in our own marketing. We'll say, oh, they won't notice this. They won't notice this problem. Let's call it something else. Let's make it not appear to be what it is. Now, you didn't see this in the Volkswagen ads. Wilt Chamberlain, he's not fitting in a Volkswagen. Then again, Wilt Chamberlain is seven foot one. You are not Wilt Chamberlain. If you're six seven, it might be an option for you. And that's what the ad talks about. And it talks about how it might be an option for you because the engine is in the back. You've got all this leg room where the engine was. So when it comes to this strategy, this may not be for everybody and this may not be for you. It's not just doing the opposite of everybody. It's stating your position in a way that is not ambiguous. You say, no, it's not for everybody, but look at this. It may be for you. And this is why I mentioned Donald Trump at the beginning of this episode. This is where we're seeing it right now. Donald Trump, love him or hate him. He's giving people something to sink their teeth into. Republicans, very scary now because they were trying to pull the realtor game. They were trying to say, oh, you know, It's not this, it's this. We'll just pretend that it's this. We'll pretend that it doesn't exist. Donald Trump is bringing up some very big issues. And is he wrong about some of them? I think so. Is he brash? Absolutely. Is he isolating big chunks of the American population? No doubt. But he's bringing up issues and he's forcing people to have these discussions. And because of that, They're no longer able to get away with the discussions they might have had 4, 8, 12 years ago, 20, 50 years ago before people were asking these questions. Everybody was thinking these questions. And in this case, the political arena, it might have turned some people off from voting for certain candidates. But he's being pretty obvious about things. He's calling people out. And he's literally doing that. In the last couple of days at one of his speeches, he gave out a guy's mobile phone number. And I bring him up to say that this is what it looks like to take a stand. And even if you're brash, and even if you're wrong, and even if you have no experience, and maybe, just maybe, some of the stuff that you're saying sounds a little bit racist, people are still going to be attracted to you. So think about what you can do with this in your marketing. You're not going to please everybody. That's impossible. Pleasing everybody is when you're trying to say, no, that's not an interstate. That's a river. It's not a river. Nobody's fooled. Pleasing everybody is denying what is. 
and trying to please everybody, the reason why you're not going to do it is because everybody has an opinion. Everybody knows what is right for them. You've got 1,000 people, you're going to get 1,000 opinions. Some of them are right, some of them are wrong, but they're all right for the people that they belong to. And the reason for that is because opinions are not facts. Does Donald Trump really know what's going on? Look, I think he's a great character on reality television where you have celebrities that are pretending to run a real business and you give them these basic tasks that you might give a junior high or a high schooler. He's great at that. He's a great villain. He's a great businessman. He's kind of like Mr. Monopoly, Mr. Burns. Very fun to watch. But does he really know what's going on when it comes to politics? I don't think so. He certainly does not have the skills when it comes to getting in a room with other people, many of whom are not going to agree with him, and coming to some kind of consensus. He's used to doing things his way or not at all. Still, people like him, the reason, because he takes a stand. This is a huge issue with American politics, and this is why everybody's frustrated, because you've got people that are saying whatever it takes to get them elected, and people are sick of this. Even Barack Obama, who's all of a sudden talking about how gay marriage is great, love wins, the Supreme Court made a right decision. He wasn't saying that eight years ago. He said, oh, marriage between a man and a woman. He said whatever it took to get him elected. If you can't be yourself, what's the point? If you've listened to Red Podcast for a while, you know about my background in the music and entertainment industry. And I can tell you firsthand that there are a lot of what I call trapped entertainers. There are people that are doing very well from a monetary, a popularity standpoint, but that's not really who they are. Why is it? They tried something on, a mask, thought it might work. It did work. It took off, and now they're trapped. Being famous, being rich, being a celebrity, if you're not able to be yourself, it's one of the worst things that you can do to yourself. Same thing for your business. If you're not in a business where you can be yourself, especially your kind of business, you're listening to Red Podcast because you're an influencer. You have a personality-driven business. The information that you're putting out in your books, your podcasts, your speaking engagements, that's you. It's not just information. It's information that comes from inside of you. If you can't be yourself, what's the point? That's another reason why you should take a stand. Not only is it going to get people more attracted to you, not everybody, but some people, they're not going to be in the middle. They're going to really love you or really hate you. And I'd rather have that than have a whole lot of people who are just kind of lukewarm about me. I want people to love me or I want people to hate me because the people that love you, that's that 80-20 rule. The 20% that love you, that's where you're making 80% of your money. And if you can't be yourself, You're just like those trapped entertainers. Don't think because you're only famous in your niche that you can't be there as well. There are a lot of guys I know in business, their philosophy has done a 180 since they started. But they're afraid to let that on publicly because they're making so much money. They don't know what they're going to do. People want something just for them. Seven foot one, Wilt Chamberlain, he wants a big car. Guy who didn't relate to muscle cars back in the 60s, didn't relate to going fast, maybe he's a little scared. A small car that goes slow, that's for him. There's a great book, it's called Yugo, The Rise and Fall of the Worst Car in History. It's a fascinating story about the Yugo, which was a Yugoslavian car, imported to America by the same guy who brought Subaru to America. So this guy knew what he was doing. Brand new, $39.95, under $4,000 was selling like hotcakes. It wasn't a great car. It didn't last long. Immediately, it was made fun of. They said there were more of them on the side of the road than on the road. It was so poorly built. Yet, because of the price, because it provided freedom to people, independence to people, or they felt that it did, people were buying them up like hotcakes. Yugo was not for the sports car people. Yugo was for people that just needed to get out of the house, needed to do errands, just wanted that sense of freedom. They didn't care that they had to get there fast. They didn't care about looking sexy. They didn't care that everybody was making fun of it, and everybody was and still is. Even the title of the book, 
the rise and fall of the worst car in history. Nobody denies that. But there were still people that bought them because of that need. It's not for everybody, but it was for them. So what can you do with your business right now? You've got a personality-based business. You've got a message that you want to spread. What's the first step for really jumping up that popularity and getting people to love you and also hate you, but not have feelings of mediocrity for you? First things. One, let people know who you're for. Let people know who you are. Let people know what you stand for. Let people know what you don't stand for. If there's a particular group of people that you're not for, let that be known as well. People are very afraid to do this. They think, well, if somebody's going to give me money, I can't keep them from giving me money. Big mistake, and here's why. When you let people know that they are not for you, it brings the people whom are for you even closer. They love you more. Nobody wants something that's for everybody. We want something that's just for us. Again, Wilt Chamberlain, big car. Super conservative people, Donald Trump. Something just for them. They're not getting that from Barack Obama. And people who feel that they're not represented by someone like Donald Trump, well, they're going to go on the opposite end. They're going to be in the Barack Obama corner, the Bernie Sanders corner, the more liberal corner. If you want an example of this in action, Red Podcast, when I relaunched it, episode 154, it's at redpodcast.com slash 154. I talked about reasons that you want to stay and you want to listen to Red Podcast. I talked about who this podcast is for, and I talked about reasons why you might not want to stay. You might want to unsubscribe now. It's not for you. Put it all out there on the table. Do it. Trust me. It will get you the results that you're looking for, which is people to love you, people to consume what you're doing, people to use what you're doing, people that will be helped by what you're doing, not just the mediocre people, not just the middle of the row people that are going to buy your books. Maybe you'll make a little bit of money, but that book's going to sit on the shelf. You want more than that. You want impact. You want people to get your books, read them, put them into action and tell a friend this is how to make that happen. In general, I think this is a great way to live. If you focus your energy on what you do best and who you are, these are the results that you're going to get. If you're a podcasting fan, you probably know Mark Maron's WTF podcast. Speaking of Obama, he just had Obama on, on a podcast that he records in his garage. And he talked about that on the podcast. You can go to WTFpod.com to listen to this if you haven't. He talked about how he got the interview and what setting that up was like, and what happened after the interview. And what I feel was the most important part of what he said is exactly what I'm talking about. He was talking about the different kind of interviews that he could have done. And I don't know how much you know about Mark Maron's past. He's a comedian, but he was also a host on Air America, which is a more left-wing talk radio network. It didn't work out for him. He's not a political guy. So in order for him to work with Obama now, and few people would turn that down, it got a million downloads in the first 24 hours. But in order for him to do it and to move forward with it, he was going to do it on his terms, which was a laid back conversation, not necessarily political, but done in his style, in his location, where he could control the situation and do the interview his way. And that's how it came together. And look what happened because of that. It wasn't just another interview. He made podcast history, the president of the United States coming to a garage, not much different from the room that I'm in now, not much different from most podcasting studios. The president of the United States coming down to play at his table. That's what this can get you when you take a stand, when you play your game, when you let people know how you feel and you're not ambiguous about it. Let people know how you feel. Take a stand. Focus your energy on who you can help the most, and that's how you're going to have a lot of impact. Something to think about, if you can relate to this, reach out to me via Twitter, at David Hooper is my username. If you think it's crazy, if you think I'm leaving money on the table by doing this, reach out to me via Twitter, at David Hooper is my username. Related to this, coming up on the next episode of Red Podcast, that's going to be episode number 164. I've got a guy who was on reality television. Just an easy 13-week stint, that's assuming he got to the end, but has made a career out of it 
doing exactly what he wants to do. And we're a decade later, he's making more money than he ever has. He's got a huge audience and he's having more fun than he ever has. Never thought he'd be able to do it, but here he is. We're going to talk about his story. That's going to be on episode number 165. That's coming up. We're going to talk about the business of reality television, how he's not pleasing everybody, just a small segment of the reality television audience. And I'm going to show you exactly how he does it. That's going to be on episode number 165. Again, questions or comments, reach out to me via Twitter. That's the best way, at David Hooper. I appreciate you listening to Red Podcast. If you go to iTunes and subscribe, that will make sure that you never miss an episode. And if you like what we're doing, tell a friend. That's how we can spread the word, help more people. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you on the next episode of the Red Podcast. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com. It's made of magnesium alloy.